Hello, my name is Kai Landwehr. I am head of marketing at MyClimate. The MyClimate Foundation is a market leading partner for effective climate protection, globally and locally. We provide companies and individuals with solutions for effective engagement in sustainability and climate protection. Our three main pillar activities are in climate education, consulting and in our high quality and quantifiable climate protection projects. These projects don't only contribute to climate protection, but also to the SDGs. As we have seen in the previous videos, urbanization is a global megatrend. A trend that is causing huge challenges for the cities and urban areas. Challenges such as the quality of life in general, air pollution, a massively growing demand for urban infrastructure and resources, and the social question of inequality. Especially the demand for new and more functional infrastructure requires sustainable solutions. Organizing the individual mobility as well as the transport in fast-growing cities could become a key driver for solving the global climate issue. Since 2000, due to a rising demand in energy-intensive activities, especially in developing countries, the economy-wide emissions saw a surge by 37%. In the transport sector, the emission increased also by 29%. From a global perspective, mobility and transport are major contributors to global CO2 emissions. Around one quarter of global CO2 footprint results from the transportation of people and goods. And demand is still rising every minute. Incremental improvements in the transport fuel efficiency and the carbon intensity of fuels have kept global growth in transport emissions lower than the growth in transport demand. But the absolute numbers still show that this is a huge driver of climate change. However, this means that the transport sector has the potential to become a huge part in the solution process. Based on current policies, Experts estimated that global emissions from transportation will increase by 60% between 2015 and 2050. However, with our current technologies, emissions from freight would need to decrease by 45% and emissions from passenger travel by 70% if we as a global society want to meet the objective of the Paris Agreements. You see the massive goal conflict which we need to address? Today, fighting climate change is not the main driver of transport policy reforms, as decision makers often prioritize investments in transport infrastructure and services to address immediate externalities such as the environmental pollution, road safety and congestion. Therefore, prioritizing sustainable transport investments, addressing both climate and sustainable social development agendas can draw resources from a broader set of stakeholders. This is one of the many opportunities which come with the shaping urban mobility in a sustainable way. By looking at the average CO2 emissions from each transport mode, there is a strong argument to make for sustainable urban mobility. When choosing the favorite mode of transportation, it is important to consider each country's power mix because of its relevant influence on the CO2 emissions. As we can see here, train is the lowest carbon mobility option in Switzerland because of the relatively eco-friendly power mix here. In Germany, Poland or China, for instance, the average CO2 emissions by personal kilometer are on a higher level because the trains get their power still from a higher percentage of fossil resources. In this presentation, I try to draw a vision of a better, more climate-friendly urban mobility and transport based on concrete best cases that already exist. I will continue on an applied basis indicated by some of our global climate projects showcasing the potential of climate finance as a driver of change. In general, the shift of passenger and freight travel to more environmentally friendly and socially sustainable modes such as public transport, walking and cycling improves massively the quality of life for the urban population. Due to less traffic and air pollution, there is improved road safety, less health risks and time saving for the people. 
Out of an economic perspective, there is scientific evidence that a more sustainable, climate-friendly mobility fosters private investment, improves local job value creation and creates better income opportunities due to, for example, more lively pedestrian areas. In terms of environmental protection, fossil fuel savings means less CO2 emissions, but also a better air quality and less soil degradation. Last but not least, based on a shift of demand away from fossil fuels, sustainable urban mobility can ensure diversification of energy supply, lower energy cost and use much less imported fuel. Shaping a more sustainable urban mobility requires a collaboration between the public and the private sector. A focused regulatory framework and the commitment of local decision makers can and will unleash private engagement and investments. You have seen it before. The future vision of urban mobility is autonomous, effective. It is connected, electrified and finally green. How do we get there? Let's have a look on some pioneer projects. I'm presenting you some applied examples of good practice cases, starting with and in Vienna. The city of Vienna is another good practice example of low carbon mobility. In Vienna, 39% of all journeys are made by public transport, more than elsewhere in Europe. One of the reasons behind that is the introduction of car-free zones in the town center of Vienna. A study by the Indiana University Public Policy Institute shows that these pedestrian-only zones increase the property value of the affected area, increase the life of the communities and even have an impact on the daily social interactions between inhabitants. Also, it helps local businesses. Another study proves that due to banning cars in the Vienna city center, the local stores recorded an increase of sales by 49%. These zones are visually pleasant and very attractive for tourism as well. A well-known example for a smart and environmentally friendly shaped urban mobility is the Danish capital Copenhagen, where riding a bicycle is a deeply induced part in the culture. 90% of the inhabitants of Copenhagen own a bike and 41% of all trips in Copenhagen are made by bike. Furthermore, 25% of all families use a cargo bike, which is a beautiful low-carbon solution for grocery shopping, for example. The political vision for Copenhagen is to be the world's best city for cyclists. This implies making cycling safe, fast and comfortable for all, including new and inexperienced cyclists. Due to the unique nature and leading bicycle policy, the impact on its inhabitants and the city can be already measured and compared to the status quo before. Residents who cycle in Copenhagen request 1.1 million less days of work due to sickness, which caused massive savings in the public health care system. It contributes to the saving of 50,000 tons of CO2 emissions annually, 10% of Copenhagen's carbon neutral strategy. Social, economic and environmental costs decreased by factor 6. It creates more public space and the decline of air pollution due to less parking lots and the greater attractiveness of housing districts. Let me give you two more concrete examples of urban mobility projects with environmental and social impact, enabled by carbon finance. In Switzerland, the number of electric buses, hybrid buses and trolley hybrid buses remains small. Conventional diesel buses are still, in the, are still the first choice for new acquisitions. Key reason for this are the high investment costs and the lack of experience with alternative technologies. Our climate protection program encourages the purchase of electric and hybrid buses. To reduce the fear of the initial investment costs, reduction certificates issued by the Swiss government can be purchased for reductions in CO2 emissions generated by the electric, hybrid and hybrid trolley buses. The proceeds from the sale of the certificates enable bus operators to plan their capital outlays more profitably in the medium term. 
Another MyClimb program supports the increased application of e-cargo bikes for the transporting of goods in inner city traffic, thereby reducing exhaust fuel emissions and noise pollution as well as improving air quality and road space. This helps to reduce CO2 and other polluting emissions and eases road traffic. As part of the My Climate program, owners of an e-cargo bike benefit from an annual payment from the sales of CO2 certificates, which can be used to cover some of the purchase costs. This project enables the constant expansion of the bike fleet and guarantees the success of the sustainable traffic concept in the long term. My final snippet for more sustainable urban mobility shows the situation in two major cities in Latin America, Medellin and La Paz. This graphic shows the comparison of a similar roadway project in La Paz and other types of public transport. The initial investment and the ongoing operation and maintenance costs will be covered by the ticket fees within a short time. For example, Mi Teleferico in La Paz doesn't require any subsidies for its operations. A fully integrated roadway has an excellent ecological footprint and will bring many benefits. It will operate efficiently not only in mountainous topography and achieve significant time saving for its users. Traffic and noise will be reduced. Inside the cable car stations there is space for different facilities such as pharmacies, markets and shops. The city's districts will become safer and have a better infrastructure. Furthermore, urban roadways establish itself as tourist attractions too and offer visitors safe access to districts they couldn't reach safely before. Today, it is more important than ever that we establish smarter and climate factory transport solutions. These solutions, like the mentioned cable car projects, already exist and have proven their value for habitants, nature and climate. However, these projects require heavy financial investments, strong commitments and the support or at least the acceptance of the general public. We at My Climate deliver analysis and reports that show on a scientific base the environmental benefits as well as the socio-economic side effects of small and large-scale green infrastructure and mobility projects. We provide you with arguments and equally important with knowledge about and access to the global carbon finance system, programs and markets. And access to the global carbon market was the milestone for the cable car projects in Middle East. With the Paris Agreement coming into force in 2021, many new of these opportunities will appear. Let's start the discussion about it. Thank you so much for your attention.